Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at saturated and unsaturated triglycerides, triglycerides in respiration, triglycerides as an energy store, other roles of triglycerides, and then we'll finish with a summary. So any triglyceride molecule can be described as being either saturated or unsaturated, so we're going to distinguish between these two terms. Commonly we call triglycerides either fats or oils, so these are the names that generally refer to them in a non-scientific way. So oils tend to be kind of fat liquids that you could see in, for example, olive oil. And fats tend to be things like butter or margarine and take on more of a solid form. So these are the two types of forms that triglycerides can appear as. The main difference between fats and oils is that fats are mainly a solid at room temperature and oils tend to be a liquid at room temperature. So a fat would take on a solid non-changing sort of form, whereas oils would be in the state of a liquid. So the reason why they're both triglycerides but each oil and fat have a different state is due to the presence of a double bond between some carbon atoms in the fatty acid tail. So remember the triglyceride has a general structure of glycerol and three long fatty acids. And in these fatty acids, sometimes between carbons we can have a double bond. And the presence or the absence of these double bonds dictates whether we have a solid or we have a liquid, i.e. if we have a fat or an oil. So the fatty acids in triglycerides with hydrocarbon chains, those that have no double bonds between the carbon atoms are termed as being saturated. So a triglyceride obviously has the glycerol and it has three fatty acids attached to the glycerol. If we look at one of these fatty acids, we've got a hydrocarbon chain running along the length. And if we look at one of these, we've got the carboxyl group at one end and then the rest of it is a hydrocarbon chain. And if you look carefully, all of the carbons are joined to the other carbons via single bonds. So there's no double bonds and we term this being saturated. And every single carbon is joined to four other elements. Some fatty acids, however, are slightly different. Their hydrocarbon chains have one double bond between two of the carbon atoms. And we call these monounsaturated. So they're unsaturated because we have now a carbon-carbon double bond between one of the carbons. And mono refers to the idea that there's one double bond. So again, we have our fatty acid, a chain of carbons, and you'll notice one double bond in the whole mix. And then, of course, we can have fatty acids with their hydrocarbon chains that have many double bonds. And if we have this between many carbon atoms, then it's called polyunsaturated. So as before, we had monounsaturated. Poly refers to more than one. So we've got one here and we've got one here. So anytime there's plus one double bonds, we call this an polyunsaturated fatty acid. So we said before that the triglycerides can either exist as a solid, i.e. fat, or a liquid as an oil. And we mentioned that it's the carbon double bond which dictates whether it's a fat or an oil. So the carbon double bonds in any unsaturated hydrocarbon chains, i.e. monounsaturated or polyunsaturated, the presence of them causes the fatty acid tails to bend slightly. So on the left here, we have a saturated fatty acid tail. So all of these will be fully carbon single bonds and it's fully saturated versus on this side, a poly or mono unsaturated set of fatty acids. And you can see that they've got these bends in their chain, causing them to change direction. And these are caused by those carbon double bonds. They cause a shape change in the chain. And this bending is very important because the bending pushes the unsaturated triglyceride molecules further apart from each other than the saturated ones. So on the left here, we have a bunch of saturated fatty acids. And because they're all very, very straight, they have the ability to compact together. And the space between the molecules is very limited. So they pack in very, very tightly. On this side, however, we have all of these unsaturated fatty acids and all of the bends in the tail are causing them to push further apart as if they're holding out their arms and trying to get people to move away. So they're kind of pushing each other apart so it's less compact and the space between the molecules has increased. So when there are these spaces between the molecules, it weakens the intermolecular forces between the unsaturated triglyceride molecules. So they end up forming a liquid at room temperature. So the important point here is that these bends in the fatty acids for the unsaturated fatty acids are pushing each other away so much that the spaces mean the intermolecular forces are weak. And intermolecular forces 
are basically the chemical attractions between this triglyceride and this triglyceride and the neighbours as well. So intermolecular forces mean between molecules. So they're weaker because they're spaced out more and the links can't really form between them. Whereas when we look at a saturated set of fatty acids, the intermolecular forces are much stronger because they're able to pack closely together and take part in lots more intermolecular interactions. So the reason this is important is because in a solid, particles pack together very, very tightly and they rigidly stick together and don't move. And this is why it's a solid and it doesn't flow. This is very much like the saturated triglycerides. In a liquid, however, like an oil, particles are more spaced out and the forces between them are a bit weaker, so they tend to flow just like a liquid does. So this is why when we have weak forces in unsaturated fatty acids, we have a liquid form, like oils. And in the saturated fatty acids, the forces are stronger, they're more compact, and so it's a solid. So this is why saturated fatty acids make fats, which are solids, and unsaturated fatty acids make oils, which are liquids. So now we have just a summary of these different types of triglyceride based on the number of carbon double bonds they have. So if there's a saturated fatty acid in a triglyceride, it has no carbon-carbon double bonds, and the state at room temperature is a solid, and we name this type of triglyceride a fat. A monounsaturated fatty acid found in a triglyceride has one double carbon bond. It exists as a liquid at room temperature, and so we call these triglycerides oils. Polyunsaturated fatty acids have many double bonds. Again, it's a liquid, and we call it an oil in the same way. Triglycerides have a range of different functions in the body, but one of their most important roles is that they can be used in respiration. So when we carry out respiration, which every cell in any organism needs to be able to do, the biological molecules, like glucose, which is the normal case, gets broken down to provide energy. So the classical equation for respiration is that a molecule of glucose is reacted with a molecule of oxygen, or O2, and in the process, they produce two waste products, which are CO2 and water, H2O, but the main product that they eventually form is ATP. And ATP is what we use to get our energy. And the reason we get energy is so that we can do things like move our muscles, think, and do all of the processes that the body has to do. But we don't always need to use glucose for respiration. We don't just eat sugar in our diet. We can use lots of different molecules. And triglycerides can be broken down into their components, which are the glycerol and the fatty acids. And these can also be used in respiration too. So remember, the triglyceride molecule is made up of the glycerol with three fatty acids. So the fatty acids are the chains, and the glycerol is here. And when we break that down, we can form its two components in this way. Reacting this with oxygen, again, gives us exactly the same product as before. CO2, water, and from this, we can still produce ATP. And actually, triglycerides in respiration release a lot of energy due to the large number of carbon-hydrogen bonds which we can find in their fatty acid chain. And as these get broken down, the energy is released. So this is basically a section of the hydrocarbon tail of one of those fatty acids. And you'll see that even in an unsaturated or a saturated case, there's always a lot of carbon-hydrogen bonds throughout the tail. And every time these are broken, they lead to a good amount of energy being released, which would then be used to make ATP, which again releases energy later on. As well as this, they provide a good source of water, and water is used in many metabolic reactions, and hydration is very important in all cells of the body. The reason we get water from it is because this is the water that gets released when the components of the triglycerides are broken down in respiration. Remember, looking back at the respiration equation again, the components of the triglyceride get broken down and they form oxygen, and in doing so, one of the waste products we form is water. And this water can be used to go and carry out other metabolic processes or hydrate the body. Not only can triglycerides be used as a reactant for respiration, but they can store energy as well, so they're a really good energy store. They're an excellent molecule for energy storage for a number of reasons. The first main reason is that they provide the most energy per unit of mass of any storage molecule. So we talked about how in respiration we can use either sugar or we can use triglycerides to provide the energy in the form of ATP. So both of these are able to form ATP. But if we had the same mass of sugar and the same mass of triglycerides, we end up getting two times the amount of ATP with triglyceride than we do with sugar. 
So there's such a good energy store and they're so full of energy in their chemical bonds that we get more for our value than we do with sugar. And this is useful for lots of animals including ourself because it reduces the mass that must be carried around. So if we solely dependent on sugar for our energy, we would have to have twice as much mass to provide the same energy as fats. Whereas if we store fat as our energy store, i.e. triglycerides, then we can store less of it for the same amount of energy. So it's a really good way of packing energy away. The other reason they're good as an energy store is because they're very large non-polar molecules, so they're insoluble in water. So when they are stored either in cells or outside of cells, they don't mix and they don't dissolve with the water. And the importance of this is that they do not affect the osmotic balance of the cells in the body. If the water potential of the cells goes up or down, we end up getting water moving in or out of the cell and changing all of the osmotic balances of the cells, and this is bad. So with fats, we don't get any of this change in water potential. The fat simply keeps the water potential the same. We've got other videos talking about water potential and osmosis too. Triglycerides have other roles as well, not just as energy stores. Oils tend to repel water because they're non-polar. So animals that live in bodies of water, i.e. aquatic animals, produce oil on their skin as a waterproof for their fur. So things like otters, for example, live in lakes and swim around a lot, and the oil that they produce keeps water off their fur and it makes them swim better. Some animals use fats as well as a thermal insulation. So especially in colder climates, things like a seal can have great amounts of fat in their body and it helps keep the heat in and keep the cold out. So it's a good thermal insulator. Fats are also used by animals to protect internal organs. So even though we've got several organs in the body, what we find in reality is that all of these organs, like the kidney for example, are surrounded by layers of cushioned fat. And so this means that any time we're running around or in different positions, the kidney won't be damaged by external forces. So the forces get absorbed by the fat. And the fat just gives the kidney an extra bit of protection. Fats are also less dense than water because of their chemical makeup. So they aid in buoyancy or floating for aquatic animals. So for example, large mammals like whales or larger fish like sharks need to control when they can float and sink in the water and the level of fat inside of them can help control this buoyancy. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.